Good afternoon again, everyone. For those of you who joined us regularly for our live stream series, then welcome back. If you're uh, new to all of this, then welcome. We host this series for business leaders and people leaders in our community looking for perspectives during what is becoming not just a tricky time, but uh, a long and tricky time. Bonjour et bienvenue. Si vous avez nous uh, joindre pour nos autres webinaires, merci. Si c'est votre première fois, très bien. On espère que vous trouvez la valeur aujourd'hui. I'm Mark Keeley. I'm the executive director of the Ivy Academy. That's the learning and development wing of Ivy Business School it's in London. Je suis le chef de l'éducation exécutif à l'école de commerce Ivy à l'Université de Western en Ontario. Okay, so we've been um, we've been a bit heavy lately with, with these. Uh, can you please uh, lighten up already, Mark? That's a thing that we hear a bit. Uh, can we just for once in this world have some fun, as as Bill Murray would say? So fine. Uh, today, we're going to honor the spirit of that feedback that, that we've been getting, and we're really excited to welcome back Ivy's own Kenita Blanchard for a, a really practical session on virtual leadership and, and communication. Um, I don't, I don't want to belabor uh, the intro this time, so Sean, over to you. Sean's our, our technical director. Sean, can you uh, take us through the flow today, because it's a little more involved than, than it typically is. Sure thing. Thanks, Mark. Welcome, everyone. Bienvenue. It's great to see so many folks tuned in today uh, because we'll be asking for your help with some of today's session. More on that later, but for now, just click the chat icon in the bottom of your window to keep it open. As always, feel free to use the Q&A window if you have a question for Kanina. Uh, we'll be following up with the full broadcast by email, and we'll also share all of the poll numbers, the PowerPoint, and some exercises you can take back to your own teams. Let's get into it. That's what you expected. Maybe that's not what you expected. But what we know is not so long ago, the world was very different and people wanted to work from home. But then, if we had a drum roll, came COVID. Not a topic to laugh about or to joke about. And you know what's happened? Our world has literally turned upside down. Think about the quotes that you just read. People wanted to figure out how to get their companies to let them work from home. But upside down, here we are. And here's another thing. As we've gone upside down, here we are now, living like the Brady Bunch, all on a screen, all of the time. This is a serious topic. This is a serious topic because how a lot of people are feeling today is not healthy. But we're gonna take a slightly lighter look at the topic and not because we're trying to make fun, but because there is a lot to be learned about having fun. Fun, what does fun mean? Well, I'm gonna pitch it to my friend, Sean, because there's no way I could say it the way you can say it, Sean. So can you take us through what Yoda would say right now? Well, I don't know if I can, I can do the voice and everything, but I'll try to get through the words. I think Yoda would say, whether thrive at home you do or be surrounded by others you would prefer, learn you must to thrive what is and what may come next. So beautifully done. The reality is, is that we are where we're at. We don't necessarily have a lot of choice and we don't have a lot of control over a lot of things that are happening today. But we do have control over some really important things. And that's what we're gonna look at today. And we're gonna look at it with hopefully open eyes. 
So what can we control? If we look at this quote, what we know is that we can quote, we can control our attitude and we can control how we engage and with whom we engage. Viktor Frankl, when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Now, don't worry. We're not going to talk about having you to change all kinds of stuff about yourself, but we're gonna have you tap into the part of yourselves that bring you joy. And I wanna say this very carefully, because if you think back 18 months, we have so many examples of people who were struggling, people who said that they were fatigued, people who said that they were exhausted of the commute and the travel. And there was so many self-help books about how to develop a better attitude at work, how to engage more impactfully at work. And here we are again. The only difference is we're on a Zoom box. So let's move forward. Let's look at just a few things that we're seeing in research and scholarship in the media. So there's a lot of research going on out there that says even numbers like this, crazy, 94%. And we could stop and just look at this picture and say, oh my gosh, 94% of people want back to work. But hold on. Look at the fine print. People are saying they'd like to spend at least one day in the office a week. That's a little bit different than a message that people want back to the way it was. Let's look at some of the other things that we see out there. We're seeing words from sites like Monster that talk about people are struggling with feeling purposeful again. People feel like they don't aren't fulfilled, they're bored. And you know what? Those are really, really important words to think about. What happens when people feel disconnected? Some of the other language that comes up when we use the word disconnected, unpurposeful, is language around feeling numb, around feeling lost. And this isn't the way we want people to feel. What we see in even more polls is that three and four workers want to return to an office in the future, but they expect the workplace to change. Forbes says that in fact, COVID-19 will change the workplace forever. But I want to stop right there. And as you look at these quotes, I want you to think about an article that I'm just going to quote from that talked about in 2016, what you could do when you felt disconnected. Now, I want you to think about the time. This was 2016. This is when we were in the office. We were, I was traveling 80% of the time. We used to say, we want you to feel and know it's okay to feel the way you are. We want you to learn practices like breathing and meditating. We want you to create art and open up and engage with people. Reflect yourself, but communicate with others and learn to enjoy the simple things. That all sounded like really good advice for 2016. I want you to keep that advice in mind and think about, is it still relevant today? Let's move forward on our few little slides we have because we have some surprises ready for you. So you used to be tired, you're tired now, okay. Some things have changed, but some things haven't. Moving forward again, what can we do with the way that we feel? Well, let's remember that not everyone feels like they want to go back to work. There are people who are actually really happy being at work. So what do we have? Sean, there's only one word for what we're dealing with, and that's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess, but it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity because if people felt like this before COVID and there was help, then you know what? We can help ourselves. And here's one of the ways we're going to help ourselves. It's the way we started today. We surprised you, right? You were wondering, why is there Star Wars on? We're going to talk about games. 
we're going to talk about something that is really important, and that is the value of changing things up. Because it's hard to show up every day the same way. We don't leave our homes. We don't leave our four walls. And guess what that's doing? That's impacting our ability to feel joy. So let's look at games, Sean. Let's look at what games can teach us and show us. So when we say games, I want you to think about games that bring you joy and bring you fun. All right. Now, here's a little bit of fun. Let's shake it up. Are you enthusiastic about working virtually right now? So please, please tell me. Are you enthusiastic about working virtually? So as you guys answer, Mark, are you excited about working virtually? Not anymore. <laughs> Were you excited before? Uh, I, I, I prefer an office environment, so no. Okay, so let me ask you, when you were going to the office every day, did you ever have bad days? For sure, of course, ever, I think everyone does. Everyone does. What are some of the, can you think back to the bad days as people answer poll one and poll two and Sean's gonna let us know when we have a good quorum, but tell me about the things that were a struggle for you in the real world. Uh, it's, it's not that different from this world. It's the back to back to back to back to back without an opportunity to think or an opportunity to kind of retreat into my head and get, and get some real work. done. So again, some of the same stuff, what did you do to help yourself back then, Mark? Uh, I would calendar meetings that weren't meetings. I would calendar work time. Okay. So you had some strategies to solve the problems that you once had. Yes. Right? It sounds boring though, doesn't it? So what if we made this fun? Now, I think we're having some challenges with the poll, but where are we at, Sean? What are we seeing here? Well, with about 75% of the audience having voted, uh, we're looking at the first question, how enthusiastic are you about working virtually? Uh, 32% was the uh, answered moderately enthusiastic, which was the most popular, 23% uh, high and 10% very high. Interestingly, on the team side, only 1% thought their teams were very enthusiastic about meetings, 15% uh, thought high, again, lower than the individual score. And then the, uh, the distribution of sort of negative numbers is, is much higher there. Any reactions? Yeah, absolutely. So I think this is really important because we're coming to this discussion with a mindset, or I would argue that there's many people and in the media, we're seeing a lot of this discussion that virtual work is bad, that we're tired of it and we want to go back. But the results are going back to saying there are some things people are really liking, right? And we can't lose sight of that which is good. But what if we reframe the question instead of saying working virtually is bad and is a problem to what can we learn and how can we reinvigorate, reinvigorate working virtually for ourselves, but as leaders, how do we do it for our teams and our teams that we seem to be more worried about? Isn't that what you saw, Mark? We seem to be more worried about our teams than us. It's, we, I, I read this everywhere. I, I feel it around the school. I feel it with our team for sure I do. So I promise you what we're gonna talk about next is not rocket science, but I promise you as well that it can make a difference because we know that boosting morale and motivation starts with recognizing your people, making sure that they're thriving and you're worried about that and we're worried about that. How do we address that? We engage them. We engage them because not only is their attitude and motivation critical, it's critical to the company coming up with solutions to help it move forward. Now, on the, my well, gosh, I guess it's on your left side, my right side of the screen, there are five key points that if you look at the literature, so whether you're looking at scholarly research, um, articles in HBR and other business publications, here are five key things that pretty much most articles will talk about. 
These are tangible things that we can do to make the work world better, whether we're in person, whether we're online, or whether it's a hybrid, which is likely where the world is going, right? How can we break up work days? How do we create variety? Does every meeting need to be on Zoom? Can we find ways to break it up so that we're doing the right work in the right way? We still have this crazy thing. I'm bending down and I'm going to bring it up. Does anyone remember what this is? It's a telephone. The telephone, mine doesn't work, but the telephone still exists. And if you plug it in, there may be some meetings that are better that way. But you know what? How do we know that? What if we engaged with people and asked them? helping people balance responsibilities. There's literature out there that says, you know, part of the stress people are feeling is not necessarily just working from home, but it's the reality that we have children and responsibilities at home that didn't used to be there. So let's remember what it is that's a problem and what isn't a problem. Keeping energy levels up is for sure an issue. And if we talked about how do we keep energy levels up? We've talked about this before. How many of you are sitting? Stop it. Stand up. Make sure you have your water. The sun. How many of us start working at 6 a.m. and end at 7 or 8 o'clock at night? Get out for a walk. We, there's lots out there about energy and appreciating one another. But what we're going to focus on today is fun fun in a virtual environment. Sean, let's move us forward because learning can be fun. I want you to dispel the myth that fun is a bad thing and fun is trivial because for a very long time, executive ed schools, adult learning has focused on using games to help people have experiences, to help them make them feel like they're contributing and learning and participating. There's data out there. And what have you been doing for most of your time during COVID? I have a feeling you've been playing Monopoly more than you've ever played it before. How about puzzles? How about video games? Games are important. And Mark, we're doing something today and the Ivy Academy is gonna do something that's kind of cool today. And it's all about games, but games aren't new to the Ivy Academy, are they? No, not at all. I mean, if you think about our Kind of core pedagogy experiential learning has been part of what we've, we've done forever. Uh, just, just like it, you know, it is at the school, we've been a, a bit, maybe a bit ahead on incorporating actual games into, into programs for a long time. And if you think about a simulation as a, as a type of game, and when we did at the very highest level for a very large bank, we ran a, a three day sim game, a war game of sorts, uh, you know, played by their top executives, and they they thought it was the greatest thing they had, they had ever done, and that has spurred us to to build our own, publish our own simulation for the for for, for the first time. So it's um it's not new to us at all. We 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 fundamentally believe in this. Absolutely, and I just looked at a chat that came up that said, you know, teams are feeling disconnected, especially people who are being onboarded and they're being onboarded in the middle of COVID, how do you make them feel like they're part of it? Well, games may be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And one of my children actually is being onboarded into a very large company, and they not only are bringing their new employees in, they're bringing uh, existing employees and mentors, and they're playing games together. So games is part of the solution. So let's bring forward the Ivy Academy game to get through COVID. Sean, I'm gonna pitch it to you. Maybe you can explain our game. Sure, thanks, Kanina. So uh, to everyone in the audience, we are going to work through a few sample questions right now on the stream. Uh, these are conversation starters, and we're just asking you to submit your responses in the chat box. Don't worry about answering the questions in order or getting your spelling right. Just answer as many questions as you can. We're going to take all of those submissions and compile the most common words. From that list, we'll create randomized bingo cards and send them out to everyone who registered today, along with a list of the questions that we used. So you'll have your stack of bingo cards and your thought starters, 
And at your next team meeting, you can distribute the bingo cards and use the same discussion questions to get a conversation started. Encourage each of your team members to come off mute and give answers to each question. The rest of the team listens for words on their individual bingo cards and circle words they hear in the discussion. So for everyone here on the call today, there's no way to lose this game. You're just helping us build it for now. So why don't we start with question one? And again, we'll ask you to submit um, you know, just a few words in the chat in response. What was one thing you loved doing in the office? So I want to say something here, especially as we start to see these wonderful answers that are coming up. So guys, we're playing a game, but we're not playing a game as just something to do. This is a purposeful learning game, and it's going to accomplish a couple of things with your teams. One, it gets them talking. And one thing that we know that is so detrimental about being disconnected is that people feel socially isolated. And we need to address that. We also need to help people feel and make it okay for them to feel how they feel. By playing a game, this doesn't become kind of a complaint fest. It becomes an honest articulation of the words that people are saying, things they love, things they don't love, things they struggle with, things that they want to share. So a game is a way to learn and engaging people helps them open up. And if we think about the list of things to do to help people who have lost focus and feel like they don't have purpose, it is to look at simple ways to get them involved and help them be purposeful, part of the solution as to how you can move forward. Because you as a leader can't do it alone. Your organizational can't do it alone. And individuals can't do it alone. It's gonna take a group. Mark, what do you think of that? Oh, I think of that completely. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm watching the chat. I'm watching all these answers come in. They're, they're all human in nature, right? The collaboration would be at the very, near the top of the list. Lunches are at the, close to the top of the list here. Uh, just a whole series of comments around the, the idea of being being with or around other people. Yeah. And I'm going to offer something. I know none of us love the video camera, but it is an attitude. If we choose to say, this is the person. So when I'm looking at you, I am looking at Mark. Mark, you are real to me. I don't mean to sound trite, but this is important to make connection with people. Mm -hmm. So even trying to change our attitude that this may not be the same, but how can I make you feel like I'm listening to you and care about you? Mm -hmm. Sean, are we ready to move on to another question? We have had tons of, of great responses coming in, and I already see a few answers coming in for the next question, which is a little bit of a change in pace, but you did mention that it's, it's not about complaining, it's about being open and honest. So what's one negative aspect of working from home? I'm sure we all have a few in mind, but you know, pick one or two. But by the way, I like I like Darcy Kachuk's answer to the previous question, which was getting paid. I watched that one go by. I thought that was great. So, Mark, I'm going to share with you something that I'm hearing from a lot of people. I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. OK, but the answer is they're missing wearing heels. Now, I can't people... really relate to that one, but I will I will take it at face value, Kanina. I have had some of the greatest conversations with executives, with clients, with students. And, you know, something as simple as I don't dress up anymore. Right now, I think we all used to remember complaining about having to wear polyester and pantyhose. And in your case, probably a tie. I don't know. But we all got really sick and tired of not getting dressed up, right? Now, I can't imagine wearing four inch heels. I'm five foot two. I'd actually be as tall as other people. That would be kind of awesome. But, you know, for some people, one of the negatives is they feel like they're just not who they used to be. And there's got to be a way to bring some fun back into this virtual world when it comes to feeling like I'm at work. What do you think? I, I completely agree with that. I mean, I, it, I just think about, you know, in our team, it uh, and this was this wasn't mine. This was our our head of operations, Barbara, who's amazing. You know, injected these 
sort of fun coffee breaks into the week. And the only rule is there's no work. It's a, it's a half hour of pure uh, fun. She draws a random question out of a, out of a hat. One, one of the questions we, you know, was pine, does pineapple belong on pizza? And we had a 15 minute lively debate about no. that. I, I agree with you, by the way, and we're in the minority and everyone else. Anyway, that's a whole other that's a whole other thing for another time. Well, they're wrong and we're right. And, you know, I'm seeing some of the language. There's no pineapple. Somebody likes pineapple on a pizza. Stop it. We see that people are talking about I've got no breaks. I've got no time to commute. I'm going to push back. I can't tell you how many times people would say if I was at home, I could go for a walk. If I was at home, I could. Right. The problem is, is that we have ourselves created habits. We have habituated into a world where we are online from six to six or longer. We're human beings. We can create other schedules, but we have to make it OK. We have to make it OK with our bosses. We have to make it OK with our clients. But heavens, can't we create a first morning walk to work, which is around the block? and a walk at the end of the day. But how do we do that? Because we're burning out. But I think we have the power to make some of these changes. Sean, how about another question? By the way, Tom, Tom Keating, whoever Tom Keating is, is taking this way too far. We're outnumbered on the pineapple thing, Kanina. But he's, he's even saying it belongs on hamburgers and I can't even, no. I can't no. even deal with that. Stop it and stop having fun, we're at work. Sean. Are you asking me about pineapple on pizza? Because if you say yes, yes I'll I'm, never talk to you the... again. Uh -oh. Wrong. <laughs> so wrong. Next question. The next question is, what frustrated you most about coming to the office? You could tell when I switched to this question because the entire chat box just went commute, 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 commute. commute, commute. Yeah. yeah. So we're not commuting and we're complaining because we're not commuting. No, we're actually complaining because we don't have change. Right? I get it. I feel the same way. It's like living in Groundhog Day and I'm trying to be purposeful to say, how can I create change? My husband actually, poor man, spends 17 hours a day in the bedroom. Yes, that's where his office is. So no, no comments. He walks out between meetings and he opens the front door every day. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he goes, this is what I normally do. I walk from meeting to meeting. And so he's walking to the front door. And I'm kind of thinking, wow, I think I have to give him some kudos. We used to hate interruptions, but now we miss social interaction. Can we not find a way working in our teams, working collectively to find solutions to these problems? Because there's a lot of good about today. I think we're smart enough to figure out how to create some social time. How about drive to a parking lot if you happen to live in the same city with your masks on, in the cold, with your mittens, sit six feet apart and yell at each other, get blow horns and have a chat, make it fun. This is within our control. Sean? So we're, we're flipping the last question on its head a little bit, which is what is your favorite part about working from home? Uh, I think we've all got some some positive things in mind. Uh, for me, it's being able to bake in the middle of the day. Oh, okay. I cuddle up with my basset hound on my new rug and she licks me and that's creepy and it just brings me joy. So let's ask Mark what brings him joy before we move on. Uh, I can I can squeeze a workout into the middle of the day now which I, uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to give that up even, even if I go back to the office. Now, Mark, I'm going to ask you, do you tell your team, and we have the, the vision of truth right in front of us because it's Sean's face. Hmm. Do you say to Sean, I'm going to fit in a workout, go for a walk. I don't want you to work. Go take an hour. Uh, I, I've very, I've really tried to encourage the team that we're not worried about hours anymore. It's not hours. And that's a tough thing because contracts are still written around hours and people still think about that. Yeah. But I, we, 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 we really try to emphasize it's about, it's about results and getting your stuff done. It's not about, there's not a, there's not a calendar or a time frame that matters that much anymore. Absolutely. But you as a leader, right? You have to demonstrate that. 
I mean, I don't know how many leaders say, oh, build in time, right? Whether we're working in person or at home, right? We're saying, oh, make sure you work in 15 minutes before and after. But if your boss never does, what do you yeah. start doing? Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's, you uh, start. It's, it, it's important for sure. It is. And so again, can we find a way through this, Sean? Maybe. What do you think? Do you think a game like this would get you saying and sharing ideas with Mark about what could make things better if you could play a game like this? What do you think? What would you tell Mark? I'm putting you on the spot. What this would is, make this is going to get spicy, Sean? Like this is going to get spicy. I think we should play it. I think we, we should take exactly this game once we're finished building it, and we should play it as a team. Okay. Uh, I think my favorite part about it is the listening, right? The only way to win is to listen to other people speak. You can't get points for words you say. So. Really nice. Love it. So tell us where we're at and where, how do you think we're going to be able to pull this game together for people? So we will take all of these questions away. And again, I've seen some great responses to this last question, which is uh, how or what would help motivate you at work in the COVID era? Uh, so feel free to, to leave your responses there. That was our last prompt question. Everyone will receive a set of bingo cards that look uh, something like this. Uh, and on the reverse, you will find the words that were generated today. So these are some words that we suspect might have been, been chosen. Relax, exercise, uh, commute was on there. That will definitely be a word. And so we'll send out uh, randomized versions of the, of these bingo cards sets so that people can play with their teams back at work. Sounds awesome. All right. So let's look at what else we can do other than play games. All right. So we're going to move on and give you some other ideas. And in fact, we're going to show you walking the talk here in a minute. So Sean, if you could bring up the slide deck so we can show folks uh, some, ah, uh, oh, there it is. Creative pursuits. Now, what do I mean by that? So I had the great privilege of being in a meeting where some folks brought a young lady. Her name is Emma Richard. She is a, uh, a graduate of Western University. She's here in London. And she has started a business creating graphic visualization. So Emma, I'm going to ask you to come online so we can see you and everyone can know what it is that you are going to be doing. So Emma actually graduated with an engineering degree and she has started this business to visualize conversations. So maybe at your next brainstorming session that you have, maybe when you play bingo, you can invite someone like Emma here, who at the end of the discussion is going to be able to show you, show you and capture how do we as an organization make things better. Emma, you want to come up and say hi? Hi, I can't seem to turn my video on. It's not letting me, but I'm very happy to be with you here today, uh, invisibly for the moment, uh, and to be listening and drawing throughout this conversation and to be able to provide you with a visual takeaway and kind of reflection back of everything that we've talked about together. So at the end of this program, you're going to see and you're going to receive not only a game that maybe you can open the conversation with, but you will also see what it is that we discussed here today. And maybe this can be a guide or a, something that you can share with your own organization to say, hey, what do you think? Would this work for us? Let's move forward because there is a lot more that we can do. And I'm seeing some comments that say, I've done this in the real world. I never thought about it doing it virtually. And I just think that is such a prescient comment because so many of the things we used to do online, uh, in person, if we're just a little creative, if we connect with the right people, we're going to find a way to be able to bring this home on virtual in our virtual world how about we move forward here and look at some other ideas that organizations are doing so you know what we used to do those ridiculous icebreakers uh, we used to get together we used to laugh about it when people would say oh we're going to do an icebreaker and we might have rolled our eyes right because we were going to do a spelling bee but you know I think we all used to like that why because we'd laugh and we'd connect now, what's stopping you from asking all of your team members 
to send their baby pictures. We used to play that in the real world. Let's do it online. What a great way to start a meeting that no one expected. Have some fun. Create some ways that we can engage together. Mark said that you have, what, half an hour where people just talk and it's not about work. Okay, what about we draw together? What about we use the technology and play it something online or we storytell or we share pictures or we do a spelling bee? There are so many virtual free games out there. You can absolutely spend money on games, but there's a lot out there. And maybe what your team needs to be interested to come is to know that you care about them enough that instead of a safety moment, we start off with a funny personal story. We create a social environment. You know, we teach children about how to deal with difficult situations with a card deck. Well, couldn't we find alternatives to dealing with difficult situations and bring that to life in team learning. Maybe we do a personality test and have a conversation about how we used to be in person and how we've changed, or maybe how we're still the same. Lots of other ideas here, but I think we wanna start getting to some of these questions. So I'm just gonna run through these couple of slides, but there is lots of technology coming. I'm not a techie and I personally don't see myself working in a VR environment anytime soon, but there are so many tools out there that maybe you don't need to be online. Maybe you could use Miro or, or multiplicity of other online collaboration tools where you can give your eyes a rest from staring at the camera, but you can still collaborate and work together. And I think as we kind of end up here, you say you care about your people, Mark, you're working out. Going back to this idea of safety moments, if you really care about your employees and you know they've been sitting all day, get up and Mark's gonna take us through some calisthenics right now because he cares about people at the Ivy Academy. So Mark, I want you to walk the talk. Hey. Okay, <laughs> what else are we gonna do? Come on. Show us something good, Mark. Well, uh, so I'll, t I'll show you what my physio gets me to do, which is okay. if I threw my back out from sitting too much before Christmas, one of these joggings where you lean back in your chair. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Why don't we actually do that for each other, right? And some of you are saying, can you share some of the resources? Absolutely, the slide deck will be available to you and have fun with it. What's next, Sean? Mojo. All right, I feel so awkward using the word mojo. Um, I actually had, oh, uh, Mark Welsh really, really likes your arm extensions. I think that's wonderful. There we so go. I have, I have, so I have a new golfing buddy. It's good. Okay, good to know. How many people have said to me and maybe to you, yeah, they've lost their mojo. So it's not about feeling disconnected, but it's something a lot even deeper, even more personal. And this article from Inc. was sh uh, shared, I think it was 2015. And mm -hmm. they shared that there are some things that you can really do to get that energy back. And I think that we've all pushed ourselves so far to accomplish so much online that we've stopped celebrating. I don't know about you, but I miss being in a classroom and having the students smile and clap and just hearing the noise, the hugs the personal touches, the attaboys. I saw someone said about a high five. Well, what are some small wins you actually can feel good about yourself again? Not something so big like making the numbers for the quarter, but find things that are gonna make you feel good and please help other people feel like they've succeeded. In our crazy world, how many times are we just stopping people and saying, thank, thank you? I saw you do that. And when we're around people who are negative guys, that has a way of resonating. This is not new. I am not sharing rocket science, but I am reminding you of something so important. Surround yourself by people who bring you up. Stop focusing on, I have to do this and I have to do that To I wanna be healthy so that when we move back into a more normal environment, whatever that looks like, I want my kids to see me be resilient. And maybe it's okay to help your kids see you're struggling because we all know 
that focusing on what you can control and focusing on what matters and who matters in the moment, this isn't just about getting your job done. It's about helping others succeed at the back end of this. All right, enough motherhood. We're going to make a game there too, right? Mojo game. Well, we don't have to talk about that, do we, Sean? The mojo game. These are some of the things that people have shared. Uh, increase their mojo. Um, we're back to the uncomfortable shoes. So sorry, Mark, those heels. I don't know that that would ever make me feel good, but I think dressing up every so often, I'm going to encourage all of you to have a dress up Friday. Remember casual Fridays? Shake it up. Have people order the nicest thing from Amazon they want, right? I mean, whatever it takes, put on the pearls, whatever. Have a dress up day, right? It's the opposite of what was, but how powerful would that be to laugh again and comment on one? Oh, I love your scarf. And everyone, please take a look at Mark Healy's glasses. Are those not the coolest things? that you have ever seen. All right, lots of books and lots of resources. These were books that you used before COVID because people were struggling with having a happy, positive attitude and people are having the same problems again. And it's okay, we're human beings. We get into patterns. The problem isn't working virtually. The problem is not that we're working virtually. The problem is we've gotten into habits that are unhealthy for us the same way we got into habits that were unhealthy for us when we were together. Mm -hmm. So figure out what those are. Look at what you can control. Help yourself and help others fix it. And this is going to be the creepiest ending to an Ivy Academy video, um, webinar, right? We're going to go into Q&A here soon. Um, but please watch this clip before we go into Q&A and know that there has never been a better time for you to have a close up, so make the best of it. You see, this is my life. It always will be. There's nothing else. Just us. And the cameras. And those wonderful people out there in the dark. All right, Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close up. Mark, how about a close up? <laughs> I think I think I'm I think I'm good right here, actually. I, I have a I have a question for you on this on this front, Kania, which is a bridge out of all of this, right? So I don't uh, I don't always love being the center of attention. And I we've got some folks in our team that don't love being the center of attention. And so I'm a little bit reticent to kind of go too far down the sort of games path but i also recognize if we just if we just keep having boring dry zoom meetings we're gonna we're gonna go nowhere and so you know what, what do you see in the literature how, how do you how do you sort of think about that for the introverts out there that are, that are not don't love putting themselves out there all the time well i think there's a few things to say so first of all on this front what we want to remember um that neuroscience and i'm not a neuroscientist but there is so much work connecting how the brain works to leadership and communication, that one of the things that we know is that habituation kills, okay? It kills. When, and what is habituation? It means habits we get into. So when every PowerPoint presentation started in your boardroom and you were all together, half of you zoned out, put your arms crossed and went like this, it was a habit. So here's the issue, online as a leader, Maybe it's a game with your team, maybe it's not. Maybe it's, maybe it's storytelling, maybe it's showing family pictures. But the point is that every so often you've got to shake it up because when people end up in habits, they tune out. And when they tune out, they're not listening, they're not focused. And it's almost like this vicious cycle. So we know that habituation kills and we are in it in mounds. So let's do something to change it. And maybe a game is. And I wanna talk a little bit about what you said about introverts. Remember, introverts get energy from outside, right? 
extroverts, so we often use these terms in different ways. What I want to say is that when, if we're playing a game, if we're doing something collaboratively, we can engage people just like we did today. Maybe they're not comfortable coming online and giving an answer, but they'll do it in chat. There's lots of really exciting ways we can engage people in gaming um, that is really fun. And there are some wonderful online games. In fact, in one of our classes, we went to a site and I'm not advertising for anybody. It's just the site we use because it was free, but we went to Scribble and we had students play kind of hangman and we did it for a personality test and to look at social styles assessment and the fun that everyone had and realized their social styles coming out. This is an easy way to make the world of work for business. We're not saying these things just because we're nice people. This enhances productivity. This builds collaboration. This builds energy in your group. So I hope that sort of addresses it. And I know Sean's going to play, so he is not going to have a problem with this. Uh, I, I, one more, Kanina, which is the way that uh, I think we've thought about this here is pretty divorced from the more serious kind of strategy work that we do and whatnot. We and separate them, right? Are, are you seeing the kinds of things that you're talking about incorporated into what would be considered traditionally like more serious stuff, working on strategy or client presentations or, you know, work, working, uh, work, you know, working in an environment that's, that's typically a bit more serious? So I would argue it always has been there. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many big banks take people out for um, team building activities? You go ax throwing as a group. We yeah. do these things when we lived in person. Why? Because it is strategic. Your people's focus, their energy, they're willing to collaborate. I saw a text just come up about the word trust, right? Trust is so important. And there's a wonderful quote. People don't care what you have to say. People don't care what you know until they know you care. That's how you build trust. And we used to do those things. You even talked about the SIM program that you put together. Adults learn by doing. Adults are experiential learners. All we're saying is that we need to find creative ways to bring what we used to do to create energy and create team and do our best to bring it online. I'm not saying that this is perfect or that it's easy or that it's ever going to be the same, but we know hope is on the horizon. But my last comment here is, Mark, is that we may be back together again, but it won't be quite the same, at least not for a long time. And so developing the same kind of collaborative engagements online that we did in meetings in person is important for now, but also for the future. Hey, thanks. Hey, Sean, you're watching the Q&A, right? I haven't been watching it at all. Is, uh, is there anything in the Q&A we should be getting to? Yeah, actually, there's a great question from Shannon here. Uh, it sounds like Shannon maybe and her team have already tried games early on in the pandemic, right, in, in wave one. And the question is, do you think that, that you know, it might have been the norm during wave one and maybe has fizzled out a bit in wave two. So for teams who have maybe tried this and now are in the Zoom rut anyways, how do you get, how do you try this again? How do you get back to it? So one, hats off to you because it was not the norm um, for the first half. And the reason we're talking about it and there's so much research and, and readings and, and coming out is because uh, some people tried it, uh, a lot of people haven't. So for those who haven't, look at what's going to make sense for your culture, because I can't tell you what's going to work in your culture. Shannon, for your organization, you tried it. And what I'd love you to do is think about what worked and what didn't. And think about if you consider what were the kinds of things that you did that built motivation, that fit with your culture. And it's about looking at new ways to do that. So maybe it's not a game in the traditional sense. But maybe it is working together on something. Maybe it's a opportunity to give back to the community. Maybe it's a way to become purposeful as a group of people together toward a common objective that may not just be work. Might be an idea to think about it. Mark, do you have any other ideas? 
Yeah, I, I like that. I, I like the idea that you, it's not a make work project, but you, you put a project together and get a lot of folks involved that maybe, maybe wouldn't in the sort of real world always interact. We've, we tried that here with, with a pretty good success, actually. Maybe it's for your own kids, right? Yeah. Maybe it's developing. Some of you are artists. Maybe some of you can do amazing things or music. I've heard of groups that uh, parents have volunteered and they play music for the children of others. And another parent loves writing stories and they tell stories. There's ways that we can be part of one another's lives if we take off some of the blinders that we have. And instead of doing your email for that last half hour, why don't you bring your kids in and put them on your lap? And you know, as a boss, there is nothing better than to have your children talking to your employees. One, your employees will love it uh, and you will be mortified. And that is just so joyful, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, that's uh, that 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 would be a bit of a uh, bit of Russian roulette putting my kids on camera. I think. Um, I think Sean would like that. <laughs> it, it it would be entertaining. Uh, that is that is for sure. Sean, is there anything else? And we've got about eight minutes left. There's a couple of things we want to do, right? We we want to get to a little bit of to use a ten dollar term, a little bit of crowdsourcing, some ideas. Take a, maybe another question or two, uh, and then we've got a grand reveal. I think we we want to do as well, don't we? That's right which is, which is ready. Uh, well, let's, so let's hold that for a second. Any, anything else in the Q and a that we should be getting to? Um, I mean, there's a question here about exactly what you had said, Mark, if you have back-to-back -back meetings already, where do you find room for this, both in terms of timing and energy, right? Mm -hmm. How, what's the, the time of week for this? How do you set it up? So listen, you guys know all the answers to this, right? You block time and then people fill it up, right? So we, we, know, the, we know the right thing to do and we know the excuses, and I'm gonna call them excuses for why it doesn't happen because it happens to me too. We block off lunch because we're gonna walk and then someone puts a meeting and we don't say no. So there's a few things. I would argue this used to happen to you because if it's happening to you online, I'm pretty sure it's happened to you in the real world. Right. So part of this is who we are and that we're going to someone, some people are going to get themselves into that situation. What we do know is online, there is a sense of pressure and there is a sense of concern for some people to actually come um, to, to do these things. They're afraid they're going to lose their job. They're going to feel like they're not being kind of heroic. And that's where leadership comes in. Walk the talk. Show it, prove it, do it yourself, and your people will learn. If you can make it okay for others, they will do it, and they will thank you, and it will build trust. And I think we had some answers actually pop up on the chat. What uh, I saw something pop up there. What, uh, what did uh, the person say? Uh, Michelle suggested only uh, holding meetings for 50 minutes. The yeah. idea that an hour, for example, is pretty arbitrary, Set, set a meeting for uh, for 50 minutes and hold the meeting, hold 10 minutes at the beginning. That is a good, that's a very good that's idea. a really good idea. I see a question here about uh, people who are uh, neurodivergent, and I just wanted to share something that I've heard from several people in the last little while. You know, so much of what we teach about engagement, right, is looking at the camera, being close. Um, but there are people who have uh, brain injuries, people who have uh, post-concussive syndrome. Uh, there are people who, because of the way their biochemistry works, this is all too much. And 90 people on screen. Um, and so there are people who sit back further or they make sure that they can't see. Um, I think one of the things that we're learning is that the learning to make an inclusive workplace was important before, and it's even more important now because we actually can't see people. I actually was speaking at a class yesterday where a student shared um, with their class that they are actually physically, um, they have um, ability issues. And if they were there in person, everyone would know that they have issues, but because it's online, they don't. And so I think this is another thing as a leader that may be affecting how people feel is that there are aspects of their identity 
that are really being affected by trying to be online like this. And so the value of opening dialogue, if one of the bingo questions is how can we people help people with ableism challenges, wouldn't that be amazing to be able to have those conversations? Sean, can you, um, can you cue up the grand reveal and we'll, we'll get to it in one minute. I, I would like to go back to the audience one more time. I'd like to do one minute rapid fire in the chat as many uh, team, team building fun ideas as, as we can generate. And we'll, we'll put those together as uh, part of the summary that we, that, we, um, that we put out as a follow up as well. So for everybody out there, you know, what are some of the things that you've done that you've seen work really well virtually uh, and you know, we we'd even think about them in programs here. I think we'll just we'll just watch as things come in. So we've got trivia, oh, virtual escape rooms. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, I actually had of... students that did uh, uh, kind of a fashion day uh, together. Uh, yeah. They're <laughs> you know putting on makeup together. I mean, that may not be in your age bracket, but think about. The things that people at different demographics are missing. What else are we seeing there? Fun masks, scavenger hunts, snacks and drinks together. Pick, pick your entrance song as a Blue Jays player. That one I want to do. That would be fun. Yoga. Ooh, I'm not sure about that one for, for me personally, but that's just, that's just me. Beer tasting. I love, yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm there for beer tasting. Okay, cool. So, so lot, lots of good ones coming in. So uh, Emma Richard has been working on, um, uh, I, I guess, a depiction of this entire conversation. Sean, is that ready? Here it is. Emma, do you want to take us through it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's not quite finished. I've added a bunch of little details even since I sent this out for sharing, but uh, kind of looking up at the top left corner, we have this idea of remote work striking back and a question around what it actually is that we can control. So things like our attitude, who we can engage with and how we can engage. And then we got this stat that 94% of people are interested in working in the office at least one day a week. And one of the big points that comes up around that is how important interpersonal connection is and how much that matters. And kind of flowing from that is this idea that joy and fun are a part of that and actually matter a lot too. And that integrates with this idea of dealing with purpose uh, or lack thereof, which some people can feel when working remotely. Um, and then the idea that boosting morale starts with really recognizing your people. And some other ways to do that are to break up the workday, to balance responsibilities, inject some fun, keep the energy up and make sure that you're um, appreciating your people. And then over down to the left side, we had this idea around games being as part of the solution. And some of the things that can come from that are learning, getting people talking, helping people to feel and articulate those feelings and uh, the connection that results from all of those different things. Talked about the idea of results being more important than ours and also uh, the importance of leading by example in that and, and working breaks into the day. And then just around what else, some other ideas for how to keep people engaged in line, things like icebreakers, engaging an artist, which I'm particularly fond of, but also uh, spending time drawing together yourselves in a meeting, having a dress up day, whether that's in formal wear or maybe it's ridiculous hats, uh, book club, celebrating the small stuff and really taking those opportunities to reflect on, on the good, uh, sharing photos. And then since sending this out, I have just a couple points about what it is to invigorate working virtually and how uh, habituation kills was another key message that came out of this conversation today. So I'm gonna finish this up and send it along so you'll all have it as a takeaway from today. Hey, Emma, just amazing job on that, fantastic job. We're, we're up against uh, time. Sean, can you tell us what happens next and then we'll do a final word with Kanina. Sure, absolutely. So uh, we'll be sending out an emailed link to the full recording on our YouTube channel within the next few days. I saw many requests in the chat and Q&A to share all of the material from today, which we absolutely will. The deck, the chat, the ideas, the game, uh, we've got it all and we will send that out by email within the next couple of days so that you can take it away for your teams. Um, thanks for joining us again and thank you for, for your participation that made, uh, that made the session really great. Mark, do you want to say a few closing words? Good final word to you, Kanina. You know, I think 
I'm going to leave you with this. People don't care how much you know until they know you care. That is something you can control. And you also need to be cared for. So in these challenging times, give of yourself, but also don't hesitate to ask for help. And you know, we're going to get there and things will be better, but we're going to be stronger because of this. Thank you for your time. Kanina, amazing job today. Thanks. Thanks for saying yes. You always say yes to us. Uh, appreciate it. Emma, thanks for joining us. And, and wow, like just an amazing job in such a short period of time. Sean, good job again today. For everyone who tuned in, thank you. We'll see you uh, next time. Cheers.